Welcome back to Retro Rewire. My name is JJ. We are back for another In the Hunt episode, and we are on our way to Isesaki, Gunma, Japan. And as you can see here, it's rainy because we are in rainy season here in Japan. But there is beautiful landscapes here, a lot of picturesque uh, uh, environments. But anyhow, I got off the train, and look how rural this area is. And after a short walk, we finally made it, or I made it rather, to the destination at hand. We're going to hit up the hard off here and see what kind of goodies that they have. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and go inside and start at the display case, the showcase here. This is the Premier Retro Showcase. And as you can see, this thing is fully stocked. Now, before we head in there, I'm just going to do my little plug here for Retro Rewire Game Tours. If you're considering or if you are coming to Japan and you would like a tour, get a hold of me through my Facebook page. I'll leave a link in the description. And this is going to be a three-hour tour of Akihabara as well as I do offer other tours of other areas of Japan. So definitely hit me up and we're going to hit it hard and find the things that you're after. But let's go ahead and back to the display case here. And up in the back there, you can see a young game hunter doing his thing. That was uh, me way back in the day. Anyhow, good luck to that young fellow there. But we got some Punch-Out, we got some uh, Famicom games, and then we have Panzer Dragoon for 8,000 yen. That's definitely a lot higher than, um, than I've seen it in the last few episodes, which is probably uh, about half that price. But we got a number of Famicom games, and apart from the Hakuto no Ken, the Fist of the North Star, I'm not really familiar. Well, there's uh, Gege no Kitaro. But uh, what else do we have? Some Dragon Quest. I guess there are a few that I am fam familiar with, like that Punch-Out, but some of those ones I've never seen before. And then here we have our Game Boy Pokemon action. We got uh, Punch-Out in the box for 6,000. And look at that, 25,000 yen for Dracula X for the Super Nintendo. Definitely a pricey one, but not as pricey as this. Image Fight and X Multiply, 35,000 yen for the Sega Saturn version. And here we have a few Super Famicom games in the box. And look at this, Rockman 7 for 2,500 yen. And it did have a little bit of a crease on the box and the manual was damaged, otherwise I would have picked it up. And in hindsight, I should have picked it up. Here we have the Sega 3D Classics Collection, 35,000 yen, definitely pricey there. We got some Final Fight Guy action, uh, a few more Super Famicom titles. We got Super Metroid and then Area 88 for 10,000 and 9,000 for Super Metroid there. And then be, uh, down below that, we have some Pokemon action for the Game Boy Advance. We have Sagaya, which is uh, Darius for the Game Boy. We have some Scribble Knots action there, and a few more uh, miscellaneous or just random titles there. We got Sonic Wings for 7,200. I think that's one of the more expensive North American uh, Super Nintendo games. But as you can see there, not very expensive. We have the Three Wonders arcade gears here for 16,000 for the PS1. I wonder if that includes the Obi card. That's probably something that you could. Uh, if you find yourself here, you could definitely ask the staff and they'd probably be more than happy to show you. Here we have some uh, PC Engine titles. We got Shinobi. Not sure what the one in the center is. But then we have Saint Dragon there. Now it's based off an arcade game, which that is a part of the arcade archive. So you can play that on PS4 and Switch. We have Thunder Force Gold Pack 2. Dungeons and Dragons. Look at that. That thing is going up. Uh, it's almost going to match the price of the Saturn. That was 15,000 yen there. We got King of the Monsters for 18. A lot of little stickers there. It looks like it's sun fading damage uh, to the manual. Then we have Far East of Eden. This is a fighting game for the Neo Geo AES as well as the CD. And then Super Mario Bros. 4, the soundtrack for 7,000 yen. That one has definitely gone up in price. We got Soul Feast. Now, I believe this is unopened. This is new and this is sealed for 6,000 yen. Not sure what that one is. That battle something for the PCFX. And then look at all this Sega Mega Drive action. Now, I'm going to hold the camera here. And if you're wondering, I am actually filming this episode on my cell phone. I sold my cameras. And until I get the replacement, this will this will just have to do for the time being. But anyhow, back to the action at hand. We got a number of Mega Drive titles. And some of these are actually pretty, uh, some, some big heavy hitters. But look at this uh, cream, cringe, cream. Not really sure what that is, but we got... Um, Oh gosh, we got uh, part two and part one of uh, the beat em up. I can't believe I'm drawing a blank there, but we have Sonic One, uh, Sonic One and Three, Three being six thousand. Streets of Rage. I don't know why I wasn't able to think of that at the time, but anyhow, we got um, 
Thunder Force 4 there for 9,000 yen. And then here we have our Streets of Rage uh, 1 and 2. And then what's that on the on part 3 of something there for 5,600 yen? Anyhow, let's go ahead and make our way down the way into the junk section. A fairly modest section. Not It's not going to be like a super um, a heavy hitting like some other hard ops that I've been to. But I definitely like to pick up the majority of my hardware from uh, the junk section, whether it's hard off, Surugaya, and all that jazz. But here we have a super scope. And this the, the condition of the box is actually really it's actually really good. Look at that, 2,200 yen. Usually I can see I find these for about a thousand yen, but the box is usually rough and super sun faded. But as you can see, that one wasn't. We got some Sega Let's Tap too. I'm not really sure what this business is about, but they had a uh, they had a couple of a couple of these. Well, they have tap, and then it looks like tap too. And then we have our bins, our customary bins here. A lot of controllers, a lot of cables, all sorts of good stuff, and even adapters like this one for the PC that will allow you to hook up. Uh, this is Exceed. It looks like a PlayStation uh, connection there, and it has OK, so it has been tested. And then I am checking the Super Famicoms because I I am am I. I, I <laughs> I am after a one chip system and I know what, sooner or later it's gonna it's gonna give but sadly they had about like seven of these uh, Super Famicoms and none of them were uh, based off the serial number sometimes there is case swapping but I just have to go by the serial number here we have a Casio loopy look at that 6,600 yen I've never messed around with that and it doesn't really catch my attention too much we got a pair of Sega Dreamcast, and this one is bundled with uh, ho the House of the Dead 2. And they're both coming in at 5,500 yen. The other one has like the Dream Passport, so this is definitely the better of the two in regard to the bundles. And it looks like they include the memory cards in there as well. And then a few clone systems back there, but let's go ahead into the go into the junk showcase. And they had a few handhelds here. Uh, we got a PSP coming in at 6,600 yen. That's a pink one. And then the tag there just kind of gives a description of what's uh, what the issue is. We got now this 1,000 model, this blue one. That thing was very tempting, as was the red PSP in the back. And then we got a pink uh, Game Boy Advance. And then we got a Switch coming in at 13,200 yen. It is damaged and it's not reading cart games. So I'm not really sure what the full issue is there, but we have a, a 3D system for the Famicom. And then down below, we got some Joy-Cons for the old Switch. And let's go ahead and go into the modern showcase. And as you can see, quite a bit of hardware here as well. Now, the one thing that really stuck out to me is going to be the Series X here. Look at that. Coming in at 59000 800 yen and it has a three month warranty and it just kind of lists everything that it is included there it looks like it has everything and then we have these 3d zero uh, 3d zero now that's for the 3do that will allow you to use a super famicom pad and then we have a keyboard by ASCII for the gamecube for 16,500 yen now i'm not really sure what games utilize that besides fantasy star online but here's a, a couple of uh, random things a couple of cool controllers and look at this BMU, 17,600 yen, my goodness. And then we have a multi-tap there for the, what is that? For the FM Towns and for the X6800. Atari something. But man, that's a, that's one of the more, one of the most expensive multi-taps that I've seen. And I've seen plenty. We got a Retro Freak for 39,800 yen. That's not too bad of a system, actually, uh, of a clone system there little bit of an uh, for emulation and then up above we have our amiibos they had quite a bit and they all have varying prices but it looks like the least expensive is coming in at 2,000 yen just kind of look well we got one for 11 uh, 1,100 that seems to be the least expensive one and then behind that a number of PlayStation 4s quite a bit actually look at the pro the pros freaking huge and then we got our switch systems. We got a few OLED systems here. 29,800 seems to be the lower end there. And then we got a new Nintendo 3DS in the box, 19,800 yen. And I don't mean new as a new old stock. It's just like the, the revision there. They have two of them and then a 2DS for 8,800 yen. That's some hot stuff there. Those things are, are definitely drying up the, the, the quickest. 
And then we have a number of PlayStation Vitas and uh, I think there's a PSP in the back there. We got some, what do we have here? Some Switch stuff, more Switch action. We got the Splatoon edition there for 33,000. And then up above, they have a Series S the Animal Crossing Switch for 19,800 yen, and then a uh, uh, 1S. So some pretty good stuff here. Now let's go ahead and make our way down the gaming aisle. And we'll start, we'll continue with the hardware, I suppose. Then down below, we got a, play, we got a few, well, one PlayStation 3 coming in at 11,000 yen. It is green tag, so there could be an issue there. It could be something missing, untested. And then we have some PS4s. And they all look like they all look like they have a three month warranty. What else do we have here? Now these most likely will work. They're probably just like console only. And then we got a super slim there for thirteen thousand two hundred yen. And then up above, we got a little basket full of handhelds. Next to that, we have the little uh, interface there for the uh, Super CD ROM ROM. And then here's the actual unit. Now the spindle isn't spinning, and it's most likely because of a gear there. I think those things have a, this little gear that just kind of cracks over time as they get brittle. And then we got a Mark III Sega. Look at that. At 11,000, but it does have, maybe it's untested. And then here's a few handhelds. Oh man, this is a beautiful color as well. I do like that monotone uh, all red business as well as the blue one. The blue one looks just as beautiful. Here we got some DS systems and a few other a few other ones. A DSI coming in at 2,200 yen. Yeah, some Game & Watch business. And then the Maracas, Samba de Amigo, 6,600 yen. We have to see this. It's been at almost every hard op that I filmed in the last two months. And then look at this beautiful section of Neo Geo goodness. Let's go ahead and get up close there. We got some Galaxy Fight, some Robo Army for 45,000. Then we got two soccer titles with uh, this soccer brawl. Look at the cover on that thing. That thing is awesome looking. Then we got Fighters History Dynamite for 18,000 yen. Now this Robo Army. Now a lot of these Neo Geo titles are going to be available on modern platforms, you know, the Switch, Xbox, PlayStation Network, Steam, and they're a part of the Hamsters Arcade Archives. And usually they they're it's just it's under 10 bucks for per title like about 7, 8 bucks, and they often go on sale. And I believe most of these are already available on all those platforms. Save for maybe the Xbox. I don't think the Xbox got the complete Neo Geo collection unfortunately. But there's Fighter's History Dynamite. Now, some of the pricing here is a little higher, like this Samurai Spirits 2 and 1. Usually, if you really look, you can find that for about 3,000 yen. That uh, Garou 3, I definitely want to pick that up. But at 18,000, occasionally, I, I'll see it online coming in at 13,000. So that's quite a bit of a difference. Otherwise, I would have. this one was really tempting. Temp I, was, it was, I was really tempted to pick that one up. Gosh, I can't speak today. But we have World Heroes. This is another one that I was really thinking about. And that's coming in at 15,000 yen. I definitely want to get part one. This is a great title. And uh, this is one that I, I pumped in quite a bit of quarters into. We got part two coming in at 9,000. And then World Heroes 2 Jet at 7,000 yen. And I actually did pick this one up because the condition was really good. 7,000 yen. And, you know, it's one that I want to add to the collection. 8,500 yen for that World Heroes 2 there. We got 97 KOF for 18,000 next to 95 coming in at 16,000. And then 94 for 10,000 yen. I believe a few weeks ago I saw one for 3,000 or 3,000 yen. So quite a bit of a difference. Here we have Fire Suplex. And I have not played this. This is coming in at 15,000 yen. This one looks like it could be a lot of fun. Look at the size of the sprites there. And then here is the last remaining of the Neo Geo down the aisle. And let's take a look at some of these manuals. This is becoming more uh, and more commonplace here at uh, at Old Hard Off, as well as Surugaya. Some Space Invaders action. A lot of those were coming in at 100 yen. And then we got a PC Engine pad. They actually had three of them, with the other two having the purple color matching the Duo system. Some N64. And then we have a SCART cable for the Super Famicom. Look at this bad boy coming in at 2750 and it seems to be Nintendo branded so that's not too bad there what else do we got here 
Got the next section, we got some PlayStation 2, some PC titles on the bottom, and then PS1, Sega Saturn, Sega CD, and Dreamcast up at, up at the top. Let's take a look at some Mega CD action here, or Sega Saturn, pardon me. We got some Super Puzzle Fighter 2X, and then we have some Gundam business, and then we have, look at this, Ernest Evans. They had three copies of this, with one of them actually including the OB card, and that one's coming in at 3,000, and that could be unopened. And then here we have Arcus 1, 2, and 3, a collection there. And then we have uh, Nobunaga and his Ninja Force by Compile. This is a shooter. Pretty cool game. And then Black Hall Assault. I think that was a launch title. Not a very good one from what I've heard, but I have not played it myself. We got Afterburner 3 there. Got some Lunar Action. And then Mortal Kombat for 4,500 yen. That's actually not too bad on the Sega CD, the port. And then here, our Dreamcast title, we got some uh, titles. We got Power Stone, Shinmu 2 coming in at 1,500 yen. And Typing of the Dead for 1,800 yen. Wasn't expecting to see this one. I wonder how much, well, it looks like it's going to be totally different. And the layout of a Japanese keyboard is definitely not in the QWERTY, st QWERTY uh, style as the in, in the States. We got some uh, Jersey Devil here. Haven't played this one. I wonder if that one's any good. Kind of like a almost a forgotten title by Konami. We got Rockman X3 there, next to Rockman 5 for 2,000 yen. What else? And look at this, Dark Tales from the Lost Souls, or Soul. Look at this. It looks like it's a like a light gun game. I should have picked that one up. I've never seen that one before, and it looks uh, super interesting. And then we have some Dynasty Warriors, R-Type Delta. That's a heavy hitter. Some kart racing game. And then our PlayStation 2, we got some horror games. But look at that. We also have Silent Hill 3 coming in at 1,800 yen. Not a bad selection there. And then we have some Metal Slug 4. A lot of these Metal Slug games did get a standalone releases for the PS2, but I recommend getting the anthology you'll save on shelf space. But if you want to have it all, that's an option. We got some original Xbox titles here with this business, Exoskeleton. I haven't heard of this one. 5,800 yen. Could be a good, could be a good one. And then we have, what is this? Phantom Dash or something like that. Looks kind of interesting. I, I think I've seen that one before. And then a few more. Look at that Matrix Path of Neo. And then they had one 3DO game, but it's a pretty good one. Starblade, um, well, it's not Starblade Alpha, but Starblade. I do enjoy playing this one. It's also a part of the Tekken 5 uh, collection for the PS2. And then we have an FM Towns game, Princess Maker 2, for 3,800 yen. And look at the, look at the high-quality uh, screenshots there. That's some pretty high-res stuff for the 90s. Well, of course, it being a PC, but let's make our way down down the aisle here. See what we see? A, a pair of Gun Con 2s for 3,300 yen. That's not too bad of a price for those. And I want to say overall, the pricing at this hard off was definitely a little bit higher than um, what I'm used to seeing. Like here, what do we have here? We have uh, Super Mario Land 2, the six golden coins. That one's coming in at 3,000 yen and then 2,000 yen there. And that one has a little bit of damage. We got some uh, Donkey Kong Country or Donkey Kong Game Boy. We got some Mario Tennis there. And a whole bunch of lose cards. We got Yoshi's Island there. 800 yen. You see, that's like a 100, 100 yen game at other hard ops. We got the Mickey Mouse game, uh, 1,000 yen for uh, Chomai Kaimura. That's not too bad. 800 yen for uh, Mystical Ninja. I guess I guess it's a give and take here. Some of the stuff is not, not actually uh, too bad of a price there. But 500 yen for Mario Kart. I usually see that one for about 100 yen. What else do we have? 1,700 for X3. And they had a couple of copies of X3 here. 1,500. Quite a bit, actually, of X3. X2 for 1,200. And then we have some Battle Clash for 300 yen. Totally forgot to pick this one up. I got a Super Nintendo mouse, and that's definitely uh, compatible with the mouse. Here we have some more boxed games with this one by Koei. Look at this. Some airline simulation game, and that's actually a pretty cool cover. I do like that. 
what else do we uh but it looks very very uh a little bit too much i'll just uh, appreciate the cover and put it back let's go ahead and make our way here we got some chrono trigger there i believe that one's coming in at 3,000 yen some famicom titles here Got some Dr. Mario, Dragon Ball, Super Mario USA for 2,500 yen and 2,000 for this Rockman 5. Now it is missing the interior, like uh, the little uh, area that you would place the cart in. So it would just kind of be like kind of free floating in there. And then we got some more Famicom business here. We got some Kid uh, Dracula there for 2,000 yen, Sansan for 1,000, Ikari Warriors. So some decent titles here. I didn't really browse too much through the, the Famicom section, but you just never know, I guess. What else do we have? Some N64, a lot of first party stuff, a lot of, a lot of stuff that you would expect to see. That's another section that I didn't really browse through too much. We got super columns and columns for the Game Gear, 15, uh, 1,500 a piece. And a couple or a few GameCube games with uh, Super Mario Sunshine coming in at 1,000. 200 yen and then we have this funky looking family computer famicom case for 6600 yen and guys i hope you enjoyed this episode definitely have some more stuff planned so stay tuned and i'll catch you all soon ciao